close your eyes. Focus your attention on your breath. Watch it as you breathe in, watch it as you breathe out. Or it would be more correct to say, feel it as you breathe in and feel it as you breathe out. But stick with it all the way in, all the way out. Try to keep your attention as long as possible. If other sounds come in, just let them go. Thoughts come in, let them go. You want to stay right here with the breath, because you're trying to develop this quality of mindfulness, the ability to keep something in mind, together with alertness, watching what you're doing. After all, the Buddha said we suffer because of things we do. They're the causes of suffering that come from outside. But the ones that really make us suffer are the ones that come from inside. So we have to watch out for those. You have to be very careful to know what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're thinking while you're doing it. All too often we're off someplace else. Things go on automatic pilot. And then when the results come, we don't really know what to say because we weren't there. But if you're there all the time, right here in the present moment, watching yourself as you act, watching yourself as you think, watching yourself as you speak, you begin to realize what you're doing, why you're doing it. And if you see that something is unskillful, you can make a change. So try to stay as continually here as you can. Be mindful, be alert, and be ardent in doing this well. These are the qualities of the Dharma. The Buddha says you want to make yourself your own refuge. We take the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha as our refuge. But that's on the outside level. You also want to take them as your refuge on an inside level, and that means developing their qualities. And as the Buddha said, when you take the Dharma as your refuge, you want to be mindful, alert, and ardent in doing this well. That's what you can depend on. Nobody else can do this for you. Because the way your mind acts is really going to come to the fore when you meet with difficulties in life. We like to come to the monastery, we like to hear nothing but auspicious things, long life, happiness, wealth, beauty, strength. But the Buddha keeps saying there is suffering in the world, and you're not going to know true happiness unless you face your suffering and the potential for suffering and learn how to deal with it skillfully. And so when you have qualities, good qualities of the mind that you've developed, then, you, then you're in a position of strength. And as I said, no one else can do this for you. No one else can focus on your breath for you. You can't hire any surrogate meditators. You've got to do it yourself. But it's good work. You get to know yourself. You get to put your mind in order. And when you put your mind in order, your whole life gets put into order as well. You think of other aspects of the Buddha's teachings, his teachings on generosity, his teachings on virtue, his teachings on developing goodwill. They become a lot easier when you know your mind. And you get a really good sense of what counts as true happiness and what doesn't. And as the Buddha said, the principle is if a, a wise person sees that if there's a greater happiness that comes from letting go of a lesser happiness, you're willing to let go of the lesser happiness for the sake of the greater one. It sounds basic, it sounds simple, but it's not that easy to carry out because the mind is so easily waylaid by those lesser happinesses, those lesser pleasures, because the big ones sometimes seem so far away. So here again, you want to keep mindfulness strong to remind yourself that the long term is what counts, not the short term. This is what makes this is what makes you wise.